mysterious tectonic fault zone has been found off California's coast in Monterey Bay with this new method of finding faults using underwater internet sea cables. Mysterious tectonic fault zone has been found this way. This is by Adria Bendix, Business Insider on Science Alert. Nearly 3,000 feet below the surface of Monterey Bay, a network of deep sea cables helps scientists now to study marine life, and they've also found faults in this way. It spans 32 miles across the floor of the Pacific Ocean. These cables record sounds like the high-pitched squeal of the dolphins or deep moans of the humpback whales. They also capture the emission of light from undersea organisms like the poisonous algae. But a team of researchers from Rice University and the University of California in Berkeley have discovered another use for the network. They record underwater earthquakes as well. That, I think, is the most important of all that it can do. Now, last year, the researchers conducted a four-day experiment using 12 miles of the cable network to study the motion of the seafloor. The results of that experiment appear in a new paper in the journal Science. It was published just a few days ago, November 28th. The researchers revealed that they detected a 3.5 magnitude earthquake in Gilroy, which is a city in Northern California. They detected this earthquake in March 2018. They also discovered a new fault system at the bottom of the ocean. The technology could eventually help them map fault lines in areas where scientists know very little about seismic activity on the ocean floor. Quote, it's kind of like street lamps shining light on the area of the seafloor. Quote, this is what Nate Lindsay, the paper's lead author, said. Quote, there's a lot of potential to go and do this in the area where it makes a difference. End quote. So researchers discovered this new fault system underwater. Before the researchers conducted their experiments at sea, they tested their technology on land using underground fiber optic cables from the U.S. Department of Energy, which funded this project. The cable stretched 13,000 miles below ground in Sacramento, California, but the researchers only used 14 miles for this experiment. To start, they attached a device at the end of the cables that shoots out bursts of light. And when the ground moves, it places a strain on the cables that scatters the light and sends it hurtling back towards the device. These light waves can be measured to determine the magnitude of the earthquake. After six months of experimenting on land, the researchers moved their technology underwater. They partnered with the Monterey Accelerated Research System, MARS for short, which operates a network of undersea fiber optic cables. Every year, the cables need to be taken offline for maintenance, giving the researchers a brief window to test their technology. For their experiment, the researchers used a portion of the cables that stretches from Moss Landing, which is a small fishing village off the coast of Monterey Bay, to Soquel Canyon, an offshore marine protected area. By installing their device at the end of the undersea cables, the researchers were able to monitor shifts and fractures at the bottom of the ocean. This led to the discovery of a new underwater fault system in the Pacific Ocean in between two major fault lines, the San Gregorio and the San Andreas, which run parallel to each other. Lindsay said the fault system is likely much, much smaller and minor compared to the San Andreas, which scientists have pinpointed as the likely source of the next major California earthquake. But he said his technology could ultimately be used to identify larger fault lines in unexplored areas like offshore Taiwan, for example. Cables could, mo cables could monitor earthquakes across long stretches of land and sea. Since most of Earth's surface, around 70%, is covered in water, scientists don't have many ways to measure offshore earthquakes. Jonathan Adjo Franklin, a geophysics professor at Rice University who worked on this experiment said systems like the one from Mars, which are tethered to the shore by a cable, are so rare that you can count them on one hand. He estimated that just three or four operate at one time on the West Coast. Lindsay said, in every case, it's limited scope in terms 
of the length of the experiment and its high cost. The Mars Observatory, for instance, cost around $13.5 million. But Lindsay still thinks cable networks are the best way to study underwater seismic activity. Other ocean researchers share his enthusiasm. John Collins, who is a senior researcher at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, who did not work on the study, called the technique very promising. Bruce Howe, a physical oceanographer at the University of Hawaii, also thought the system could provide useful data. Howe said, it's based on good physics, so I think it will, paint, it will pan out. On land, traditional earthquake sensors typically measure the speed of the ground motion at a single point. But fiber optic cables allow researchers to take multiple measurements across a long path. Adjo Franklin said, for every meter of cable, you're measuring a stretch of tens of nanometers or even smaller, and that's about the width of a human hair. The Mars system, for instance, can record measurements at 10,000 locations, meaning it has the same capacity as 10,000 individual motion sensors. That gives researchers lots of data points for studying how earthquakes rattle across the ocean. When the 3.5 magnitude earthquake struck Gilroy last year, the researchers were able to record the tremors of the ocean waves, a tool that might eventually help with the early detection of tsunamis. Adjo Franklin said the nice thing about recording that earthquake was not necessarily locating, locating it. When you have density sampling locations, you can do a lot more with the earthquake's wave field to allow you to build pictures of what's on the ground. This was originally on Bitches Insider. It is on Science Alert. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.